Everybody. Today we're going to talk about the Vortex Razor UHDs. These are the 10 by 42s and so just to kind of set up the video I'm going to start with some of the, the specs, what comes with it, and then I'm going to have a field review with footage from these uh, using my phone and then just kind of some closing thoughts. So if you want to skip to that field footage definitely feel free. Uh, also, you know, I'll be posting these specs below so you guys can look through those as well. So the, the Vortex UHDs, these are going to be what they call an Abiconic Prism binocular that basically allows more light gathering. So the Abiconic Prism is definitely what sets these binos apart. Now the Vortex uh, Razor HDs are a good binocular. I have also looked through those and we'll talk about some of the differences there. But the UHD, a big difference is that Abiconic Prism. Wanted to first mention that it is going to be uh, better for that light gathering. A few of the other brands out there that are in this same similar range are going to be your Sig Zulu 9s. You've got the Maven B2s and the, the Vortex UHD. Those are kind of three that I've just uh, I've looked at. And basically, they're all going to have that similar prism. They're also all made in Japan, so there's some similarities there if you're looking for a binocular with, with that specific prism. To me, there's just a big jump when you get to the UHD, and yes, you're getting up there in price, but you are going to get a binocular that gives you a lot of great clarity, a lot of good features, and you're going to be very happy with it for a long, long time. Uh, these are not necessary by any means to get into hunting. Uh, this is for somebody that has maybe drawn that dream of a lifetime tag, they just are really, you know, binoculars are something they love to look through. Birders, it's a hobby, or they just really desire that good glass, then it's worth looking at. But by, by no means do you have to, to uh, start with these for hunting. My first binoculars were the Diamondbacks, and I still really love the Diamondbacks. We'll talk more about those later. Um, so if, if these are a little bit overwhelming from a price standpoint, completely get it. Take a look at the Diamondbacks. Uh, you can find those used good deals. It's up 200 for sure. So these are expensive. They had a price increase uh, the last year. I typically don't go off of like what you can buy at retail now. Um, and that's just because I like to look for certain deals, find used. Uh, it's, it's hard to imagine paying full retail for these personally. And so just wanted to mention that as well. Uh, kind of look around, be patient. If you are seriously considering these these binoculars these are pretty big they're tall uh, they're a little over 32 ounces so that prism does make the binoculars bigger and so to me i, I don't mind the extra weight for the the better image and so my primary uh, binocular is the zulu nines and they're super heavy but the, the image you get with the abiconic prism is definitely uh, worth it to my eyes. If you want to look at like harnesses, for example, a marsupial, you're going to have to get a medium with these. So your harness is going to have to be a little bit uh, taller. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you have a super small harness and you're using an Abiconic Prism binocular, you're probably going to need to get a bigger harness, which can be an expense. Now, Vortex did include a binocular harness with these, and it has a, I guess, a rangefinder or side pouch. It's a really good uh, harness. I still prefer my marsupial, but it is nice that they added this. It's a pretty, pretty good harness, and it has a lot of great features, side pockets, this extra harness. There's an ammo holder in there. So it, it does add uh, some value there when you're looking at the, the harness, but I still like that, that marsupial. So going through the specs, the, the UHDs, as we talked about, they're 32 ounces. They're, they're pretty tall and then they also have about 16 and a half i think it's like 16.7 millimeters for eye relief and so that's a, a pretty good amount of eye relief i had to use it with a couple clicks out on the eye cups for my eyes and then it what i like about that is when you're on a tripod you can move it all the way in 
it's easier not to touch it. So to me, the eye relief is definitely sufficient. It's a good eye relief. So the field of view is 346. Uh, to my eyes, when I have a binocular that's 330 or above, maybe, maybe a little bit lower, but I like 330 or above, it feels like a nice wide field of view. Uh, I really like when you get into that 340 and above. Uh, so these are definitely sufficient there. Uh, great, great field of view on these. One note also about the older, not the older, but the, the Razer HDs, they have a wider field of view. They're over 360. And so that is a difference here going through the, the two types, but this is definitely a sufficient field of view, especially for those, those tens. One unique feature that these have that the, the Zulu 9s and the B2s do not by Maven are there is a locking diopter. And so that is nice that these have that. So that's one uh, difference there. And then also the objective covers are very sturdy. They go on the inside of the objective lens, which I also really like too. So the these handles similar to like the Razer HDs, I think Vortex did a good job with the ergonomics on the razors. And I really like the way these feel. The eye, cop, eye cups have that same rubber on them. So if you're used to razors, you're gonna really feel at home with these. And uh, I do really like those ergonomics. What's also nice is that you're, you're in a 10 by 42. So this is a great option for an abiconic prism, binocular in a 10 by 42. Uh, the 10 by 42 is just a staple in Western hunting or hunting in general. It's a really great balance of size, weight, low light performance, and it's a really good do it all package. So for guys that really like the 10 by 42 and want that prism, I would say these are worth uh, taking a look at. The Maven and, and SIGs, those are nines or 11s. So just wanted to mention that, um, some of the differences there. As far as like glass clarity, so when I think about the, let's think about like the Razer HDs. So that is Vortex's uh, top of the line uh, as of a few years ago. Now it's, it's right below the UHDs. To my eyes, there is a significant jump when you go to these UHDs. I definitely think that it is a, a, a big jump. Like going from Vipers to Razors is a pretty big jump, but the Razors to the, the UHDs is a, is a solid jump. I don't think with UHDs, you're gonna be feeling like you want you know, much higher end. Definitely there's better, better binoculars out there, but these are gonna be giving you that wow factor Whoever looks through these, I, I think even if they've looked through some decent glass, it's going to be a good, good image that there's, there's some wow factor there each time you look through it. So the clarity is ex exceptional. I'll show some of that in the video. The eye relief is really great. Uh, the low light performance with this prism is, is really good as well. And so when you're looking at this binocular, yes, it's a very steep price, but you're getting some really good glass. You're getting some great ergonomics. You know, just a solid built binocular. Uh, these are made in Japan. So the uh, the Razer HDs recently have been made in China. So that's one other thing to think about. These are are made in Japan. And then just also wanted to mention, I know the, the Vortex warranty is something that a lot of people say, well, you're going to need it or, or things like that. And I think that part of that has become kind of a, a saying just due to they have a lot of the lower end scopes, the crossfires and I mean, you're talking around a hundred dollars and I've shot a crossfire and it, it worked for what I was using it for. But when you see those comments, keep in mind, Vortex has a super wide range of products. Uh, it's pretty impressive how they go from very, you know, in, somewhat inexpensive to very expensive and they have felt, filled a lot of gaps. So these are on that higher end. Uh, I have not had, you know, issues with razor models and the scopes, especially binoculars. So look at where they're made, you know, things like that. That's going to be important. It's not necessarily that Vortex alone is a, a bad uh, company. So I did want to mention that about the warranty. Um, I had a rangefinder that did fail on me eventually. And just, just to give them a shout out, they did pay for the shipping there. They paid for it back super quick, sent me a new range finder. So I was very happy with that. So if you're very tough on your gear, you're letting your friends use it all the time, it kind of gives you that peace of mind. A lot of companies are doing good warranties now, but I wouldn't say all of them are gonna pay for you to ship back and forth or have literally same day service 
where they respond to you and you can talk to them. So yeah, I, I, I see those comments and I get it. It's never fun to use a warranty. And you know, maybe that's an area that Vortex can work on. Um, I'm not sure. I don't really you know, know that much about their warranty as far as kind of the behind the scenes. But from my experience, it was excellent. I'm looking more at uh, the internals, where they're built, you know, th those types of things. And the fact that Vortex is going to warranty Japanese binoculars that are similar to the Mavens, the SIGs, I know those have good warranties too. That gives me that confidence with something like this. Uh, so just wanted to mention that. Look at the full picture. If you see, if you read comments about warranties, um, I'm not, you know, just saying Vortex is the best ever. I think just do your shopping, look at all the, the options. At the end of the day, if you're going to get in this price range, go with what, you know, you feel like is the best value for your, your dollar. So let's get into the field review and then uh, we'll wrap up after that. All right. So yeah, just checking out the target there. about 100 yards back there kind of give you an idea of the image starts a little shaky I didn't bring my tripod adapter so there's some more footage So a great image through these. So wanted to show you guys kind of what that looks like. Super easy to focus. Again, that's about 100 yards. Not a ton of different colors here to look at, like contrast. So not super in depth. Hopefully that kind of gives you just a general idea. do a great job of controlling glare I noticed those are little golf keys right there give you an idea of how far that is that target let me just range it I'm just curious Target's about 36. First tree is about 70. All the way to those woods is right at 100. So we've talked about specs. We've talked about just kind of a general overview, the, the Vortex warranty. And so the last thing I want to talk about, I've mentioned Maven and the SIGs a little bit. Uh, so I'm not an expert. I just have tried some binoculars. I really enjoy just checking out different brands and types. It's just kind of a hobby honestly and so i wanted to mention that with the razors what you're looking at again is a 10 by 42. so the the mavens i think they have a 7 a 9 and an 11. the the sigs are a 9 or 11. so that's a similar model that the plant in japan makes vortex specifically wanted these in a, a 10 by 42. they've also got 18s they've got eights they've got 12s so they really put a lot of emphasis on different uh, sizes with the UHDs. And so that alone probably was a lot of work, kind of, you know, uh, you know, kind of maybe a first of its kind, so to speak, with an Abiconic Prism, at least in this ballpark or this range of uh, price. And so we're talking uh, just between these three brands specifically, there's definitely a lot more out there. So I, I did want to mention that also the Maven B2s and the Sig Zulu 9s, they're kind of known for a little shallow depth of field. Uh, amazing binoculars, just incredible views, everything similar to this. The, the nines, I've looked through Sig Zulu 9 and the 9. Good depth of field. It's nothing crazy, but it's fine. The 11s, which I really, really like, it's a shallow depth of field to my eyes. There's a lot of focusing going on. And so that is a common uh, discussion about the 11s, whether it's the Mavens or Sigs. So what that means is you're going to be focusing quite a bit, especially when it gets super dark. I'm like, wow, I got to focus quite a bit where I'm covering a huge uh, terrain. There's, there's extra focusing involved. 
Now, the Razer UHD in a 10x42, I thought the depth of field was very, very good uh, compared to the 11x45. It's not the best by, by any means. There's definitely better binoculars for that. The Nikon Monarch HGs are what surprised me the most from a depth of field. But it's something I kind of look for, but I have never tested the elite binoculars to give you a fair, kind of a fair view of, like, this is definitely up there with the best. I thought the depth of field was actually a little better than the 11 by 45 and the SIGs, which would be the same or very, very similar to those Maven B2s as they're basically the same. I mean, very similar internals on those, not exact, but very similar from what I've heard. So depth of field is important, but if it's, if it's shallow, if you have the 11s, you know, I really, really like those. You're just going to focus a little bit more. Not the end of the world, but I thought these had a great depth of field. So I wanted to highlight that since we're talking about these uh, specifically. And uh, yeah, so thanks again. Hope that helps.